I delete Instagram every single night at 8pm so I do not scroll. What other people do has got nothing to do with you. Mm. You will create success if you keep your eye very, very focused on your lane and your prize and your end goal. You just really have to remind yourself of why you're doing this because it's fucking hard. Jess Seppel, so good to have you here. Thank you for coming in. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm actually really well. So let's kick us off with an unashamedly big question. Oh, okay. All right. So you've gone from you've gone from you know really a passion project with your blog on yeah. private to begin with, and all the way to like Australia's fastest growing wellness company. Thank Some you. of the secrets of making all that happen. Oh, just. A healthy obsession for what I do, a healthy yeah. addiction, yeah. absolute passion, like makes me emotional, like just wanting so desperately to support the Jay's Health community to mm. live a healthy life. It's like I do often talk about this healthy obsession and healthy addiction because mm. you actually have to wake up every day and it's like there's no choice. Yeah. I need to help the Jay's Health community live a healthy life, whether it's with my products, whether it's with a recipe. Oh, I want to show them how easy that one pan salmon is. Oh, my gosh, I want to show them what a difference it makes when you take your coffees from three or four a day to one a day, mm. how much more energy you have. Mm. I want to show them how much more confident you can feel when you take out detox and de bloat vitamin. Yeah. Um, like just an absolute obsession for what I do. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting you talk about it through the health lens, but I think through the business lens yes. it's necessary as well. Like to, to make something out of nothing and yeah. to make a business like JS Healthy, like yeah. it requires obsession. And I so think you've got so. these two things like business and yeah. sort of personal contribution obsession coming together. Is that right? I think so. I think, and I, I, you know, I don't love that word obsession and extremes. Jay's health was built all about balance genuinely. Mm -hmm. And there are no extremes that exist in our philosophy. But when it comes to building a business, I mean, it's just all encompassing. That's yeah. the truth. Yeah. And I don't like to, you know, sugarcoat that. Yeah. But I am very fortunate at this point to be able to have a team and my husband, who's the CEO, who really does take care of the business side of things and builds the business to what it deserves to be. And yeah. I, you know, what's so interesting about my, about my role is that it hasn't really changed so much. Mm. I'm still the community manager. I'm still the product developer. I'm still the one in touch with the JS Health customers and community. I'm still the one making the recipes. I'm still the one in JS Health. Like, I get it's fortunate to have a team now to support the business growth. Mm. Um, while I can still really um, be connected to my roots and my passion, you know, it's very, very important in a business like ours to be constantly connected to my customers and my passion mm. for them to live a healthy mm. life. And have you engineered that all the way along? Because, because we see so many founders who get pulled away from the things that they love. Yes. Like they build the business, it gets to the next point, and suddenly they're doing everything. Like they're the office mm. admin, tech support, they're yeah. doing this stuff that's driving them crazy. And, and it takes – often it takes them a while to figure out that they need to just focus on what they love yes. and build underneath them. Have you been, did you realise that early on? How have you gotten there? Was it intentional or you just always focus on what you want? Yeah, I think I definitely struggled mm -hmm. probably in the beginning when Jay's Health started having success mm -hmm. and I felt like I was managing too many things. But mm -hmm. I, at this point I've come back to knowing how important it is for me to be connected to sort of my strengths as well. I think mm -hmm. one um, strength I have had is I've been I'm very good at delegating and I'm mm -hmm. very good at not micromanaging mm. I uh, do think that's a strength of mine I, I, think, have, I think that's a rare strength it is a rare strength I'm very good at saying look I'm not good at that and I can hire people way better than me because it's not possible to do it all and mm. it does actually end up hurting the business mm -hmm. that's what you've mm -hmm. got to remember is that if you don't delegate and you choose to micromanage everything you're actually going to end up hurting the company mm. and its growth mm -hmm. um i think it is something that i have been good at mm. um and then also knowing every time i i've you know switched my focus from the js health community my passion to help them live a healthy life through products or recipes or a lifestyle philosophy i've seen that it it affects the growth of the company. Mm -hmm. Like I need to be connected to mm. my passion and my strengths. Yeah. And so how how have you gone building that team around you? What have been sort of the big steps along the way there? You know, it's interesting because Jay's health in so many ways was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I talk a lot about it, but my, my absolute, absolute end goal was to be in private practice as a nutritionist. Just me on my own with 
with patience. And I say often, it still is my end goal. Yeah. You can see just with that, how just obsessed and passionate I am about being with my customers and helping them to live a healthy life. So because it was an accident, there wasn't so much time to think mm. about what am I going to do? <laughs> just one thing led to the next. Honestly, I was very lucky to have my husband who came from a tech company, mm -hmm. um, who was able to, when Jaya's Health um, started, you know, showing off its strength as a company, he was able to come in and help it grow in that way. Mm. I think I don't have those, I don't have that, well, I don't even have the passion yeah. for the business side of things and, and the growth and the tech side. Also hiring, this is a team team effort. It's it's a group of exceptional females, 35 females, mm. um, female-led company, full of passion. It's just the, re the way we were able to do it was hiring a very, very good team. Yeah. Um, we're still small considering how large the company is. Mm. You know, we're only 30, 35, 40 people on the mm -hmm. team. And I like it that way because I can manage the culture. I think having a wholesome culture that represents the JS Health philosophy is a very big passion mm. of mine. Mm. But honestly, when you say like, how did, I just think one thing led to the next. I had Dean come in and say, you know, we need to hire this person, that person, this person. Mm -hmm. um, and then recently, like we've hired a CFO who can help us manage that side of things. Mm. Just It's just been, I think, it's almost helpful not to think about things too much mm -hmm. in the next steps. I yep. think Dean and I have never been strategists. We're a bit scared of strategy. Yeah. I don't know how so you feel about strategy. I, I think we get really nervous about strategy because when mm. you're in a startup, there is no time. Yeah. And strategizing can take up a lot of yep. time. Yep. We're like, let's just go in full force and we'll see what happens. Yeah. I think thinking about things too much can honestly lead you into a little bit of time wasting. Yeah. I think there's a, a bit of a difference between establishment phase of, of either a business or a, or a product line yeah. or where you're going. So establishment phase, yeah, it's, it's fast. Listen to the customers. You know, iterate as you go, 100%. Yeah. I think once you're starting to get um, a bit of a foundation in place, uh, then that's where strategy really comes in. I think Particularly so. to build on what you've already got. Yeah. Like, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big advocate of actually doing your strategic planning into a financial model. Yeah. Because that's that when you've got when you've got a base to build on, right? Exactly. Like our team, we've got 60-odd here in 100%. Sydney. That's a solid th base. Yeah, and 30-odd in Manila and to know who, when we're hiring yeah. and who we're hiring and where we're investing in, that needs a strategy. It does. And also that can be very helpful and also dangerous not to implement that at that phase of the company, yeah. actually, probably. And we're also entering that now. It's funny that you say that because it's the first time in Jay's Health's life that we've had people come in and give us some strategy. And, mm. you know, we actually had an allergic reaction to it <laughs> <laughs> initially. Like I watched my husband, he was like, because he is such an entrepreneur spirit like his spirit is like go 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 no time to think no time mm. to strategize and like mm. these people came in because we we're about to embark on a huge um traditional media marketing campaign mm. um to really show off the essence of the brand and who we are and why we're different mm. to every other vitamin company and why awesome. we created what we created but what what that entailed was people coming in and actually building out a strategy because you can't just go into the media the main media and be like okay here we are jay's health vitamins like <laughs> you know you really do need to build out the strategy yeah. to show off how you are different yep. as a company and yep. it was so funny because i watched my head my senior my seniors actually have an allergic reaction to it <laughs> and i was the one funnily enough and i'm not interested in strategy myself and i'm not really involved in that part of the company but i mm. said guys you really need to be patient during this time like mm. i was like you are jumping you're, you're you're jumping too quickly into your opinions and thoughts about this process you mm. need to buckle in and be patient because mm. i think the company deserves to see where this can take yeah. us be strategic about it even yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Where I think where I think the strategy really helps in in that kind of scenario is yeah you're about to embark on a, on a big leveling up a lot of investment I'm sure and where having a really good strategy and in my view baking that into numbers comes in is you can invest with confidence. Yes, like we are. That's that's a very good point. Next yeah. next year for us at the Entourage, we are doubling our content budget. Right, mm -hmm. and we're significantly increasing our acquisition marketing yeah. spend. And you can I can only do that confidently if I can kind of see what Absolutely. it's going to do. Absolutely. If you're just trialing something out, yeah, just give it a shot. Not too much strategy. You know, we've done that with different mm. parts of our business. Give it a go but then you need to start baking some, some rigor around it. That's eventually. exactly. And I'm so grateful for John, who's our CFO, because he's come into the company and really um, been brilliant at strategizing the mm. investment part of things. Because, Great. you know, going into traditional media, TV ads, bus ads, and a huge expansion into retail, you've got to be very cautious and careful. And he's yeah. come in with that sort of strength. So again, see, hiring people who are really good at what they do, I think has been a strength of mine and the company's. Yeah, great.
Well, this is definitely not an area I thought we'd touch on, but let's talk about like <laughs> great CFOs need to be doing that. Like they're, yeah. they're developing strategy and they're saying this is what we can do and this is what you, where you can go. Mm. A lot of a lot of entrepreneurs think that bringing in someone mm. as a CFO or a finance person is just going to be telling them no. Well, like, this no, is, don't spend that. This no, is another funny story. So my husband and I do night walks every single night and mm. I think it's – I wanted one day write a book about the night walk because it's yeah. something that has changed our lives because we go for a walk for 20 minutes after mm. dinner and we decompress from the day. Mm-hmm. We It just like separates us from the hectic chaos day of building a company but also some exceptional, seriously like miraculous ideas come up yeah. during the night walks. Do you know who else does that? Who? Lorna Jane Clarkson. Really? Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh my we, gosh, we well, had I, know, her, I know Lorna well. Yeah, we had her at uh, Unconvention last year and, oh. and that was one of her stories. Something similar, one of those stories. A brilliant way to decompress. Yeah, because her and Bill work together too. Yeah. yeah. We don't, we don't, we try not to talk about work, but what's mm. interesting, like just interesting things come up. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I remember the night walk where I said to my husband, we need a CFO. Mm-hmm. We need someone to come in and help us here. Mm. Like we have investors, very... Um, minority investors who are very silent in the company, but they were also feeling like it's time. The company is growing so fast and furiously. We need some support in this domain. And Dean Mm. loves to do everything himself. And I actually would say he also struggles with delegating things off. He will admit to that. So I can say that he really (laughs) wants to do everything himself. And me and my, and one of our investors were like, sort of like teaming up, (laughs) trying to give Dean an intervention. I'm not joking. We like literally gave him an intervention. We're like, you cannot wake up. You know, another funny thing about Dean is that up until recently, he was Emma on customer support. (laughs) He was replying as Emma. He refused to give up customer support for three years. He was still doing- Or his ego would tell Literally, he was Emma for three years and he only recently gave it up and the other day I caught him being Emma again. (laughs) So, But we went on a night walk and I I will never forget this night walk because I basically gave him an intervention. Basically helping him understand that when someone comes in, it's not going to- I think people think it can, I don't know, maybe it's a confidence thing. Maybe mm. it's a self-esteem. I don't know what it is. It's a control thing probably. Yeah. Like nothing's going to, nothing, this, I think it's knowing that if someone comes in, it's not going to change what you can do for the company. Like, mm. you, and, and it's not going to hurt. I think what you said earlier, like it, people think it can hurt the company mm. by mm. bringing someone in who says no, no, no to mm. everything. Like, I think he was scared that he, the CFO would strategize and say mm. no and mm. change the feeling of, the company and the way he wants to run things. Yeah. But if you change your mentality about that and think, well, actually, no, they're going to come in and only add mm. to the company mm. as long as it's the right person. But yeah. again, Dean had an allergic reaction to bringing in a CFO. Um, really, it took him about four months to come to the conclusion that, okay, this might be a good idea. And yeah. since he's come in, it's changed Dean's life. I think life. he loves it now. Oh, it's changed his yeah. life. It's changed the company. It's it's the best thing we've – it's probably the best investment we've ever made, yeah. having John come on board. But it's just interesting. I don't know. I think for C- – Dean is the CEO. It must – I don't know how you feel as the mm. CEO. Like, what would you feel bringing, bringing on a CFO? Uh, funny enough, I'm right in the process right now. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So I'm tell out. us how you feel because maybe that will help me articulate how Dean was feeling. <clears throat> well, for – for senior hires, like a director of finance or a director of marketing or director of sales, I find the hardest ones for me are the ones that where I don't feel I'm 100% across it. I think, yeah. Uh, and, so and is it a control thing? I think, it's, <laughs> I, I think it's more like I'm not confident that the, the time that's scariest is when I'm not confident that I can find the right person because mm. I'm not fully aware of what they need to be bringing to the table. And then mm. you're like, well, if I make this decision and it's the wrong decision, it's a really big, important one. Yeah. So that's when it's hard to make the decision. And so my, the way I've done it over the last couple of years is I, I've actually gone in and run each of those departments before bringing in the director oh, of that department, yeah. like really, really hands-on so I can kind of like, I know yeah. exactly what needs to get done. I know exactly what kind of person we want here. And, and it's only one I've, once I've done that that I'm confident I can find the right person. Mm. And that's exactly right with the CFO stuff. Like I've run all the forecasting. I've run all the accounting for, you know, a good couple of years now. Mm. Um, but I'm at the point where I'm like, I'll be very happy to hand this over. Okay. <laughs> You're fatigued. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're well, fit- and there's other, there's bigger, better things we want to do. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It helps. This is what I said to Dean on the night walk. This mm. is my intervention. I said, it's going to make you better at your job. Mm-hmm. Because the thing is, is when you try to do it all, you lose focus. Yeah. You can't possibly focus on everything clearly. Yeah. You lose clarity. And I yeah. think that's something else that I'm really um, 
I try to work on every single day is how can I bring more clarity to my role mm. and my team's role? Mm. It's something that we're working on actually right now because mm. we've recently hired a lot more people in the last six months. And I want to make sure that they have clarity in their mm -hmm. roles mm -hmm. because I think it adds success and strength to the entire company. I yeah. think in people, you know, a lot of, it's an interesting question to say to your team, like, do you feel clear in your role and what you do. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, you'd be surprised to know how many people don't feel clear yeah. in their role. Yeah. Um, even if you give them the title, you write out the job description. Yeah. Um, I think in a small company, especially that's growing because you know, like yeah. when it's growing, you all take on so many different things. Yeah. That's part of a growing company, but then it can lose, you can lose clarity quite easily. I think where a lot of the loss of clarity comes in is um, the North Star or where you're trying to go changes like, and, like yeah. if, if there's lots of new initiatives going fast on pace. You, yeah yeah new markets yeah fast pace i find we try to do uh what originally was a founder's address and now we do as a, a founder and a ceo address jack and i do it together um is talking about where are we going right three years out what's the north star mm. we try to do it every quarter we really probably only do it every six months and the response from the team is always that is so useful Positive. that is so inspiring it's about kind of getting your mm. head out of the detail and saying, all right, here's, here, here's where we're going. Here's how we think we're going to get there. And everyone yes. can kind of fit into that. And also I think another thing that employees and teams are really wanting these days is to be very clear on their purpose in the company yep. because I've been doing a lot of research or listening to podcasts on the great resignation, mm -hmm. languishing, you know, mm -hmm. what people, especially team members, are feeling after the last two and a half years after COVID, huge amounts of fatigue. Mm -hmm. Languishing is basically another way of saying blah. Yeah. Adam Grant, who's a psychologist in the US, talks a lot about it. It's this feeling of blah, I'm uninspired, I haven't had adventure, mm -hmm. I haven't had anything new. And so, and then that sort of led to the great resignation, people mm -hmm. wanting to change their jobs because I think they're a bit fatigued mm -hmm. and over life in yeah. general. But I think what my team have been communicating to me is this desire for very, very clear purpose and intention. Mm -hmm. So when you say the North Star for me, for our company, it's not so much, you know, financially, where will we be or how many countries will we be in or how many retail stores will we be in? It's definitely not sort of my team's focus. The team's focus is how many people can we help and inspire? Mm -hmm. What is the clear purpose of Jay's Health Vitamins? Not just to be, you know, X amount of dollars company. Mm -hmm. It's actually how do we stand out to be a vitamin company that's going to actually help mm -hmm. change people's lives? Yep. I think these days like employees are looking for that very, very sort of meaningful purpose. Yeah. That's sort of actually what the research is saying with Adam Grant is like people want yeah. purpose. And I know the word purpose is sort of overdone in like the media, but having a very meaningful purpose, knowing that you can come to work every single day and you're adding to the world yeah. in a meaningful way, I think is what people are starting to look for. And I think that's uh, an area that entrepreneurial businesses have a huge advantage over all the other big businesses. Definitely. We talk about the great resignation or the great reshuffle as a lot of people yeah. talk, talk about it now, um, saying that for entrepreneurial businesses like us and like our members and like and like JS Health, that's a huge plus. Yeah. We've got a lot of people that want to get out of the more stay traditional lacking purpose environments and coming to a business 100%. like ours is it's a yeah, perfect place Yeah, I feel to be. like looking outside at your team, like that's sort of, you can see that there's an excitement and a passion mm. for their jobs and what they do. And I think that's where the world's going now. You know, you want to come to work every day. I always say to my girls, work is 85% of our lives. You better come to work every day and, you know, enjoy it mostly or mm. it needs to feed your soul. You need to leave that office with your cup feeling filled up yeah with your cup filled up I don't know how to say it with your, <laughs> with your soul fe feeling filled up you know yeah, I don't yeah. want my girls leaving the office feeling blah and if they do they need to come to me and I take allow them to take a mental health day off or mm -hmm. take a vacation take a few steps back I think mental well-being mm -hmm. is such a big conversation right now because how Huge. do you really yeah. it's all very well saying take care of your mental health but mm -hmm. like when you're living in a world, this fast paced world, it is so stressful as a nutritionist, I can see the stress, I can mm -hmm. feel it, I can see the way people's cortisol levels, you know, physiologically are affecting them. What are, what are some of the, the signs you pick up on? Oh. You're like, okay, there's, there's a clear indicator that there's a lot of I'm, stress happening. I mean, I'm just intuitive. I can feel when my staff are starting to feel tired and fatigued. The signs are just not keeping on top of their workload, mm -hmm. not feeling inspired, not coming up with a lot of creative ideas. Mm -hmm. But I also don't blame them because I feel like we're living in a very, very stressful world. It mm -hmm. is so fast paced. There's so many pressures coming yeah. emotionally and physically. Mm -hmm. So much social media fatigue. Mm -hmm. You know, my girls, if 
they you know when they go home they're probably scrolling on their phones mm-hmm. I try and instill social media boundaries with them mm-hmm. that I do myself I delete Instagram every single night at 8 p.m. so I do not scroll wow. it's like the simple you actually delete the app. I delete it because it takes six seconds to re-download <laughs> I just did it the second what I'm saying is it's like when people talk about mental health and mental well-being like mm. I feel like it's that word is thrown around a lot how do we actually instill mental well-being into our teams mm-hmm. because they will thrive yeah. when their mental well-being is taken care of and that is and it's the it's exactly the little things deleting Instagram at 8 p.m. is for mm-hmm. me taking a night walk having a 20 minute morning routine Mm -hmm. having a mental health day off if they need to absolutely scheduling in a vacation even Mm -hmm. if it's just being at home for a week Mm -hmm. I'm a big advocate of that because I can see the pressure that my girls are under at times and having that week off taking three steps away Mm -hmm. three steps back completely changes them so time off is not a bad thing Mm -hmm. Um, and so I really try and instill mental well-being practices through the company because at at the end of the day, the goal is for them to thrive yeah. in the roles because that actually brings the whole company right up. And so we're trying to do also something where once a month we do something for their well-being. So mm. we do a, a JS Health mental health meetup. Mm-hmm. could be a well-being meetup. Either we just chat, how are you feeling, how are you going? Or last week we did a book club, mm-hmm. sharing books because that's right. a nice way to get people to open up what book are you reading at the moment <laughs> <laughs> um, or what podcast are you listening mm-hmm. to because that inspires a conversation about mental well-being. Um, a yoga practice mm. can be coming yep. together as a team, doing a yoga practice, doing a tequila masterclass. <laughs> <laughs> Jay's Health is all about balance. <laughs> I just think mental well-being as as founders now, mm. we really need to take it seriously yeah. and to help people thrive in this chaotic, stressful world that we're living mm. in. Maybe a little mindset shift I just had as you were talking through that is, so I've been thinking, and I'm sure a lot of other CEOs or people managing businesses have been thinking, as the world opens up, Mm. everyone's going to be like, right, I need to go on holidays. And it's like, and it's like, what if everyone goes on holidays at once? But actually, wait a minute, what if everyone goes on holidays at once? Or what if actually as the world's opening back up, you, you're saying, go and take that holiday you didn't I have. do think go, they go, need go, to. Go. Yeah. I do really think they need to. Obviously, I, I don't know about everyone going at the same time. Because <laughs> I actually, it's funny that you say that. I just brought that up last week. I said to um, some of my seniors, I said, sorry, guys, we can't have people going off at the same time. Yeah. Especially if they're in the same teams. It's yeah. too stressful on a small growing company. Yeah. But if you just come to the founder and schedule it in, you you work it out. You, yeah. And just being flexible where possible and negotiating. Yeah. Um, and just seeing like, I just think definitely encouraging time time off yep. after the last two and a half years is probably only going to help them love their jobs more. And you can either do it proactively or you're going to have to do it reactively. Yes, so, exactly. So get ahead of it. Exactly. That's awesome. Wow, that was a really area, really interesting area to talk about. It That's is awesome. interesting yeah. because I'm, I've am i definitely seen the languishing thing happen. Mm. I listened to a podcast on No Filter, Mamma Mia, the other day. Yeah. And it just really, like, with Adam Grant, who just really was like, okay, yeah, my girls must be languishing. And, mm-hmm. how like, it, it's not their fault and it's mm. – it's just the way – it's just how we're reacting to the last mm-hmm. two and a half years. Mm-hmm. And so how, as founders and CEOs, mm. can we really nourish them and basically revive them? Yeah. Because the last two and a half years has drained. Yeah. Drained, drained us, yeah. you know, mentally and physically. And so I'm really passionate about just giving my girls some some revival. Mm. Fantastic. And they will respond accordingly. Yeah. I know. But also then I also struggle with being too nice as a boss and uh-huh. founder. So that, that's, that is like – that is absolutely one of my bi- – yeah. My, my biggest hardships is running a team. I never know the boundaries. I never know how to be. I'm Because in my personality, I'm just kind I, and giving and generous. And then I'm trying to like look after a company yeah. and a culture. I think that's very, very common though for the, the creative, visionary, intuitive founder like yeah. you. That's a very common challenge. And then, yeah. the, and then, I mean, you've got it with Dean, right? Most great businesses have a bit of a pairing. Yes. You've got the more, the people that, that drive growth, have the connection yeah. with the community, and then you've got the yeah. people that run the business. Exactly. And oftentimes they can come as like good cop, bad cop. Jack and I sometimes oh, have that as well. Dean is definitely the bad cop. <laughs> sometimes we like it. Sometimes we like being the bad cop. No, no, no. you definitely it's about need getting that. the Because you know what I realised lately is that team members actually like boundaries. Yeah. They actually like to have... You know that people, well, people do not just people in, not just like the work. they like to have boundaries, and so being too flexible and too kind and too generous, like it's not always a good mm. thing. But because I am that person, the intuitive, the kinder, the more soft person in the company, mm. they can come into my office and sit on my chair and have a cry and say I'm having yep. a really hard time, like any tips and mm. I can have that really honest transparent conversation with them have you tried this vitamin <laughs> have you 
I've got a really good therapist for you. Yeah. Literally, I'll send them straight to the therapist that I know. Uh, I've got. How about going to bed at eight p.m. tonight? Mm. Um, and just having that, and then they come to work the next day and they're thriving again. Yeah. Oh, that's and that's very very powerful. And I think yeah, anyone yeah. who's more in the kind of like the management side or the bad cop, they definitely mm. need to take some lessons from that like I yes because th- Jack's the same people people will talk to Jack about things that they would never talk about with me so I'm like okay, oh you're the scared are you the, you're the one that people are scared of <laughs> I don't know we can ask the team afterwards <laughs> um, no but I try I try and be more like it's that it's good to be scared <laughs> scary I wish I say to Dean all the time I was like I wish I was the scary boss <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> um I'd love to that, oh, that was just such an interesting a whole bunch of areas I didn't think we were going to talk about. I know. So that, that is awesome. I'm enjoying this conversation. <laughs> I would like to to touch on one of the areas um, that obviously you've done so well, which is around building a, a fantastic audience, a fantastic community, and connecting with them. Uh, because we are we are huge advocates of that's where it all starts yeah. for every business. It's about building an audience and connecting with that audience, and and then you have options. Yeah. Right? Um, so. Yeah, what are some of your key philosophies around building and nurturing your audience? Mm. It's so interesting because it's like, it's it's the thing that's most important to me. So I try mm. and actually do it in every aspect of the business. Mm. Um, you know, it's not just like, it's not as simple as just saying, okay, let's do a customer support meeting weekly or let's build a loyalty program on our website and ensure our subscribers feel very taken care of. It's like, there's just so many ways you can take care of your customers and mm. community. Mm. Um, well, one thing is e-commerce. So we, our head of growth, head of e-com is brilliant at taking care of our loyal subscribers. And one thing mm. I'm so proud of with Jay's Health Vitamins, and I'm not a number person, but we have a 65 to 70% customer return rate. It's unheard of. Wow. So once people come to Jay's Health Vitamins, they really don't like to leave. <laughs> and that's because we look after them. So my e-commerce digital team are brilliant at mm. taking care of our customers in the community and making them feel looked after, whether mm. it's sending them a Jay's Health jumper Mm. on their second month of being a subscriber or sending them a free gift or letting them try this week I think or last week we let them um, we sent everyone a Jay's Health protein bar to try and taste so that is the digital e-commerce side which is definitely not my strength and not my passion but I know that they do a brilliant brilliant Mm. job at that for me it's constant communication and connection so Mm. like going as simple as going into my DMs and listening. I think listening is a skill mm. that us founders and CEOs, it's it's very hard to find the time, mm. you know? Like I actually have to carve out the time and say, you know, for the next two hours, I'm going to be in my DMs because the power of listening, mm-hmm. um, giving ourselves the time to listen, mm. what are the customers actually saying? Because mm. the feedback is the thing that can drive your company forward. Mm. It can be as simple as saying, by the way, I went onto your website um, and I noticed that, could be as simple as saying the add to cart button took a little slow <laughs> or like um, I wanted to add fish oil in but I'm in the UK and it's not lit or um, the fish oil is so great but have you ever thought of mm. um, changing the capsules to this or mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. Um, for me product development is where I hear mm. all my feedback like mm-hmm. But also not just listening to them, but then responding to them, saying mm. thank you so much for that feedback. Mm. Um, I really appreciate it. And I'm going to make my fish oil better because of it. Mm-hmm. Like not being afraid of the negative feedback. Mm. It's constructive. Mm. So it's listening to them. They feel heard. That builds community. I mean, for, I remember you have to go back to seven, eight years of building a community very organically through my blog, through mm-hmm. recipes, through mm-hmm. the books. Did I say the books? The books, the <laughs> app. Um, the eight week program. So building the community is sort of what I do. It's what mm. I, it's what I did. It's still mm. what I do. It's, mm-hmm. it's being in touch with them, creating content that they ask for. I mm. think that builds community. Content that they ask for. And then uh, you measure with like products they ask for as well. Like listening to the community oh. and hearing what. Every I, single product was developed because they asked. And were they asking for, uh, cause you're very solution focused. Yes. Were they saying, I need help with this. And you're like, yeah. great, I'll formulate a product for that. Libido was not something I was ever going to create. Mm-hmm. And, in our Thursday customer support meetings, every it's so funny because the community, I don't know if it's like an energy thing, but they're very connected because we'll let you go through periods where the same thing comes up consecutively. Mm. So mm. for consecutively for six months, libido kept coming up. It's the first time in Jay's health history we've sold out of a product five times in five months. We could not keep up with the wow. stock. But that just shows that I was never going to create a libido vitamin, but they were asking me for it. They were struggling with it. They were saying, my relationship's getting affected because of it. I don't feel confident in the bedroom. And so we went on a mission to find research-backed ingredients that could help with libido. Mm. So you can see every vitamin, I promise, has been created because our customers asked, but that's because we have 
a community where they yep. feel safe to ask for what they're needing. Yeah. And solution focus is what we do. That's the, sort of our main point of difference. And I think you're tapping into a couple of things here. There's this concept of synchronicity, right? So, so great ideas pop up in different places at the yeah. same time. Uh, and it's because uh, it's probably a far more scientific explanation of this, but things bubble up. Yeah. Due to the external circumstances. Exactly. Right? Stress so, is a big one yeah, as well. Yeah, because everyone's going through the same stuff and you've got a finger on the pulse there, so there's a synchronicity going mm. on. And then great ideas often come from something called the slow hunch. Right? Oh. We, it's like we all think that it's like, you know, like Newton sitting under the tree, the apple falls on his head and he goes, aha, gravity. Mm. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of totally. – these great ideas build up over time. You kind of – you feel it. It's there. And then it kind of pops into your yes. psyche in a way we go. And I think by listening to your customers and, and the, the first time you hear it, probably just into the subconscious. Second time yes. you hear it, starts something starts building up and then you're like, aha, everyone's yes. going through the same thing. That's true. You hear enough, great idea comes from there. No, I think that's definitely true. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just interesting to me how the JSL community, I don't know if they have like separate like meetups because they all seem to <laughs> what come. What are we going to tell Jess? They all seem to come <laughs> with the same, the, their feedback is, yep. is um, in... Yeah, well, I think that's a, the in synchronicity sync. thing going on. It's a on. synchronicity like, thing. Yeah. They're like their feedback is in sync. And it's probably because of our external factors, exactly what you just said. Like yeah. right now I'm seeing people really investing in sleep vitamins, anxiety vitamins, mood vitamins, mm. obviously, because the last two yeah. and a half years. Yeah. It's like how can our content support them? So it might be an EDM right. that says – like educational content, I think is an amazing mm. way to look after your community. A hundred percent. We agree with that. We, I'm sure you do. <laughs> That's what you do. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, like a simple, I said to my team the other day, let's just do a very simple EDM on three tips to have, have better, deeper sleep. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. people don't know that no. drinking coffee at 3 p.m., you know, caffeine stays in your bloodstream for up to eight hours. They mm -hmm. don't know that. Mm -hmm. They don't know that, you know, having... Protein at dinner contains amino acids that help with tryptophan, which is the hormone that helps you to sleep. There you go. I didn't know that. Add protein to your dinners. Yep. Um, they don't understand that potentially having hot chocolate at night has a little bit of caffeine in the cacao. Like mm. just three things that you can do to have better sleep. So education, I would say, is another great way. Educational content is mm -hmm. something that we're also focusing on this year. Mm. And another thing is retail expansion because I do think it helps community and customer mm. support. Like if you go into a store and you have that touch and feel experience and you, I'm hoping that there's going to be more education on the ground. And when the staff understand and learn about the products, mm. it's like a game changer. Yeah. So that's yeah, yeah. different to sort of your model. But I think you've got to remember it's not just the customers, it's also the people selling your vitamins. Yeah. Do they understand the brand? Yeah. Um, how are they different? How is J's Health Vitamins different? There are about a thousand million, hundred, <laughs> hundred million vitamin brands out there. Um, why is J's Health Vitamins different? Mm. I had a big background in hospitality and the staff oh. training side oh. is essential. It's a game changer. Yeah. I actually didn't like understand that until recently. Yeah. I guess I didn't have the time to invest in that. And now mm. I'm really like carving out the time when people say, but you don't have time for team trainings with Selfridges or Boots. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'll, I said to my assistant, I'll absolutely carve out the time for that. Mm. Now I've got a uh, JS Health story that I didn't even know that I had oh. until just recently. Cool. So uh, I thought I'd like to share with you. Um, I think I think you'll enjoy it. Should I do a little? Okay, no, I won't take, bring out my phone for this. We'll so, um, so you've got a a seed biscuit recipe. Oh. But it turns out I've eaten probably a thousand <laughs> of these seed biscuits. Oh, cool. Which over ones? The last, um, well, it's become a bit of a party trick of my wife's. Cute. Right, so about about eight nine years ago, no, kind of. I think it just touches on so many things you've touched on. So about eight, nine years ago, so my wife, Claire, has fructose malabsorption. So yeah. she had to do every, you know, decade or so, she has to do a real cleanse, uh. eat really healthily. She, oh, she the fruit-free ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah fruit-free ones, <laughs> gluten-free ones. The ones that, like, they, they start like this and That's they spread so out. Cute. I've seen them cooked a million times. That's so, so she cool. So she found your stuff and started on that. The way it, it goes further than that. So, um, so she was dialed into the JS Health community about 10 years ago. Wow. These cookies were like the, the entree, right? Then after we had her uh, second son about 18 months ago. Congrats. Uh, thank you very much. I'm kind of ruining it some mornings these days, but, but <laughs> on the whole, it's brilliant. But, uh, so Claire, you know, postnatal, hair started getting thinner, was talking to a hairdresser, and the hairdresser said, oh, you should try the JS Health vitamins. And she goes, Thanks. I know JS Health. I've been making these cookies <laughs> for a decade. No, that's so cool. I <laughs> love those stories because, like, the, the, those, um, I guess, community members who have been with me for the last 10 years are absolutely absolutely some, the most precious to me because yeah. they were the ones who were kind enough to support me back then mm. and I there was nothing but a little blog with some recipes and a philosophy and I'm 
very grateful. So please tell her I say thank you and we'll send do. her some more hair and energy gas. <laughs> well, but seriously, thank you, no, because it just it means more to me than I can explain. And you can't imagine how it feels for me to have people be willing to be loyal with me through this journey. Mm. Like, why? Well, it's, it's, the, it's the, well, it's a relationship. That's the thing yeah. that I know, because as soon as I mentioned that you were coming on the show, Thank she goes, you. oh, I know her, and that's where this story Aww. came out. But I could instantly see that like she felt there was a relationship there. So well done. Thank you, Claire. Thank you so much for supporting us. So we've got time for a couple more questions yeah. that I haven't seen, I you know, haven't seen. Time. We call it Make It Happen in a Minute. Uh, it's a minute per question. We definitely Gosh, can't. thank God. We definitely cannot get through. We've never, ever, ever gotten anywhere <laughs> close to getting through five questions in a minute. <laughs> okay, thank God for that. So you ready to get into it? Yes. Great. All right, question number one. You live by the philosophy that a healthy life should include indulgence in moderation and mm. zero guilt. Uh, so how could you apply this to one aspect of business? Oh. Mm, good question. Going on holiday? Great. Because yeah. <laughs> I feel enormous <laughs> amounts of guilt. My husband and I are going away next week and then we're going on a week holiday and I know that there's just going to be like guilt yeah. really rising up. Well, connecting to what we were talking about before, but you, you probably need the recharge. Exactly. So that's what I have to tell Dean and I throughout <laughs> the week. <laughs> this is good for us. We deserve this and everything will be okay. Because I think yeah. as founders, there's just a lot of anxiety like trusting. Mm. Don't you feel like the yep. trust? Yep. Even though you can have the most brilliant team in the world who've been with me for the last 10 years mm. like, and they the most trustworthy people in the world who will manage it, they can, they can do yep. it. Like it's just as founders, it's a control thing. Like yep. just knowing everything will be okay when we take seven days off. <laughs> I can see you get in the end and you're like, yes, you're recharged, you got lots of ideas, but you're like, they didn't need us. They oh, didn't need us. Guess what? My team actually thrive when we're not there. <laughs> they prefer it. All right. Question number two. Uh, on that note, what is one thing you do like to indulge in the most? Oh, very easy. Wine. Wine. Great. And gelato. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Together. I like, course. I actually always say like, can my next career be a wine? Can I be a wine connoisseur? Yeah. yeah. Do you have a I'm like, I, I appreciate French wine just yep. so, so, so much. Yep. I just love the taste of it. Mm -hmm. um, and gelato, had gelato this weekend and always pistachio. Yeah. Like, I, what do you I'm, like? I'm a wine fan as well. Yeah. Which, so we should have, we should have done this uh, in the evening and had a glass of wine. Oh, we should. <laughs> we'll do that again. All right. We could, we could talk about this forever. We, we won't. We've got a question we number could. three. I want uh, wine now. Um, <laughs> and then we'll get a wine. Uh, what is one thing you would not recommend entrepreneurs do along their business journey? You cannot look to your left or right. Mm. And what do you mean by that? You cannot. You cannot. You have to focus on your lane. If you start veering your attention and focus to people around you, competitors, mm. copying you, mm. doing everything, <laughs> <laughs> like honestly, or just in the beginning, like I have not looked to my left or my right. Mm -hmm. I have recently. I got a little bit distracted mm. and I've learned a really big lesson. Yeah. You cannot look to your left and your right. You have to focus on your lane, your attention, and also what what other people do has got nothing to do with you. Mm. You will create success if you keep your eye very, very focused on your lane and your prize and your end goal. Like looking to your left and your right, just think of it every single time. You're diminishing energy. Mm towards your company where your attention whatever wherever your attention goes it will multiply mm. Mm. so do you want it to go there or do you want it to go towards the company like it's an actual choice where yeah. do you want your energy to go um, and I also think it just allows for clarity of the company and your end product is so much better when you're focusing solely on your lane mm. so don't look left or right no great one uh, question number four what's been one invaluable lesson you've learned from your team oh Oh my gosh, everything. How to run a business. <laughs> I <laughs> Just love. that little one. Um, kindness goes a really long way. Is it what I've learned from them? Well, what I've learned just in general in our culture is how kindness must be, must be the, the central anchor mm. to what we do because mm. someone might be having a hard day. Someone might not be performing in their job. <clears throat> someone might be really performing in their job. Mm. Um, kindness is... Very much what and we do. Did that come from one of them being kind to you in a, in a situation? Yes, I think they're often very kind to me. They know when I'm having a little bit of a harder moment. Like mm. one of my um, seniors set, just dropped me a bottle of wine the other day and just mm. said, like, I know you've had a couple a hard couple of weeks. Here's a bottle of wine. Like, mm. it just, like, was so nice. lovely. Yeah. Like, gestures of kindness. I think... The other thing the team have taught me is, my gosh, the power of females. My mm. word. Mm. Like, I was thinking about what, when I was driving here, I was like, 35, 40 females. Like, it makes me emotional. Like, what the heck? Like, what we can achieve mm. when together, especially when we support each other. Um, I mean, obviously, we support each other in Jay's health. But when we support just females in general, powerful, mm. powerful things can, can happen. Fantastic. Final question. 
if a business owner wants to build out their A team, maybe their female A team or any A team, to take their business to the next level, what is the one thing they need to do to make it happen? Wake up every morning very, very, very connected to your mission and purpose. Mm. Like you cannot, I don't know, like what gets me out of bed every day. Mm. Um, you just really have to remind yourself of why you're doing this because it's fucking hard mm. <laughs> building a business. Like it is. it is such hard work. It is so tiring. There are so many moments through the journey that you want to give up. Mm -hmm. It's all too much. It's too overwhelming. It's too demanding. It's blah, blah, blah. It's just a lot yeah. and I think if you wake up with very connected to that heartfelt mission, purpose, passion, it does get you out of bed. It does get me to my desk every day mm. and gets me back into my emails creating products. Yeah. I think wake up with your mission and your purpose yeah. in your mind, in your heart and yeah. really hold on, hold on to it through the journey because the journey is going to test you. Yeah. And also not to be afraid of the challenges. Mm -hmm. I think people give up when the challenges and the hardships come. Mm. Those are the moments to really hang on tight because yeah. after those moments, something very, very magical yeah. comes. I think the whole company, for us, every time a challenge has come, everything strengthens up. Mm. So it's when those hard times come, see it as actually as a blessing because yeah. it's only going to strengthen you up personally and the company up. I think people get very afraid of the hard mm. times. I used to be too. Mm. So there's no judgment around that. But mm actually they propel you forward yeah so embrace the hardships and the challenges and know that they're actually going to be good for yourself and the company yeah well and that's how you and the company builds resilience totally. and then when the next challenge comes along you're like oh we yeah. got this and then you Great. get to the point where you're numb yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the challenges <laughs> fantastic jess wow it's been so good speaking to you honestly we, i love that we Thank covered you. some really good stuff i know there's a lot of exciting things on the horizon i know you're off overseas you've got some great things coming uh js health's way so i just want to wish you all the best of luck thank you thank you thank for sharing you. all those lessons much. with us loved being here well yeah. done on everything you guys are doing thank you very much thanks thanks for tuning in and i hope you learned something in the episode that you can apply to your business straight away to keep learning with us make sure you subscribe and also hit the bell icon so you're notified of new episodes when they're released you can also follow us on at the entourage official on all the social media platforms so thank you and i can't wait to see you in the next episode